What's up, folks? Game Rex here. Welcome back to a brand new video. Uh, dinosaurs can be very terrifying at times, so I think it's my time to react to some terrifying and terrifying and terrifying dinosaur facts. So don't waste our time and let's jump into it. Meet the largest of belly sword who ever lived. Oh god. This is Pycnonemosaurus. These massive predators could reach up to 30 feet long and nearly 4 tons. Oh my god, that's uh, not very small actually. I think that's, it's, it's not bigger than Carnotaurus. I don't know, I, I think it's bigger than Carnotaurus actually. And you know, Carnotaurus is already one of the biggest uh, abelisaurids that ever lived. These guys were discovered in the early 1950s, but they weren't formally described until 2002. I don't know, but their design, it looks very much like Majungasaurus, I don't know. For their size, these guys had unusually small yet sharp teeth. That's actually a very common trait in the Abelisaurids. They don't have the biggest teeth, but they have like, this these smaller, sharper teeth that are better suited for for grip and, and hold struggling prey instead of the tyrannosaurs who just crush and bite bones in half. <laughs> but these teeth weren't used for cutting. Unlike you, these teeth would have been able to get a grip. Yep. Allowing Pycnonemosaurus to pick it up and shake their prey. Especially That's true. considering most of their prey was likely significantly smaller than they were. Because like most South American carnivores, these guys' main source of prey would have been juvenile sauropods. Yeah, I don't think abelosaurids had much choice uh, on the menu because the thing was, uh, most of the abelosaurids lived in the southern hemisphere. There was this kind of diversity um, of prey in the northern and southern hemisphere. In the northern part of the world, in like Asia, Europe and North America, the uh, Ornithischians would most mostly dominate in the ecosystem, but in the uh, southern part of the world, like uh, Australia, Antarctica, Africa and South America, I think India is included as well, and Madagascar. The lands were mainly roamed by the giant sauropods, you know, the, the, the long-necked dinosaurs. Because the abelosaurs mostly lived on the southern continent, they almost always had to prey on sauropods. And because sauropods were so ginormous, the only suitable prey for abelosaurids were uh, juvenile sauropods, because they didn't have much choice. Unfortunately, most of the remains we have are fragmentary. So for now, not much is known about these massive creatures. You know, other than the fact that they're kind of terrifying. The way that he describes this dinosaur, I think is a very terrifying animal to encounter in real life. That was actually very fun. It was a species that I never heard of before. So yeah, very interesting actually. Allow me to introduce you to one of the largest raptors in history. All right. This is a Kilobator. Like their cousin, the hmm. Velociraptor, these guys are from Mongolia. And during their time, they would have been one of the top predators. Oh my god, look at this head crest. That's actually so amazing. I haven't seen anything like this on a raptor before. Wow, that's that's actually very interesting, actually. I wonder if more raptors had these feathered um, head crests, but I don't know for sure. And this raptor, actually, I already forgot the name of this dinosaur, but it's, again, a species I never heard of before. I'm, I'm learning new stuff here. It's actually very cool. They reached up to 16 feet or about 5 The only real competition would have been a Tyrannosaurus and who's electric. Wait, if you can compete with Tyrannosaurus, then you know you are a beast. 5 meters long. And they weighed upwards of 500 pounds or about 250 kilograms. What? Placing them as one of the largest dromaeosaurs. I think this is their accurate modern re reconstruction of the animal. It has so much in common with Deinonychus or Dakota Raptor. It looks very similar to them. Alongside Utah Raptor, Dakota Raptor, and Austro Raptor. Kilobator isn't your normal Raptor. Compared to the rest of the family, these guys are extremely robust. Their arms were relatively short compared to other raptors. Yeah, I mean, they look literally like raptor bodybuilders. They have a very heavy build. They make up for it by having extremely powerful legs. Like Utah Raptor, it's assumed that a Kilobator hunted mostly large animals. Yeah. More than likely using the Raptor Prey Restraint model, which essentially means they hunted by attrition. Leaping onto the back of a prey animal and dealing as much damage as possible with their claws and jaws. Then they're just waiting for it to bleed out. Brood. Yeah, that's actually a very common um, tactic of uh, predators. They bite the animal, but instead of killing them, 
they wait until blood loss and organ failure do uh, do the effect, so then they can feast in peace and quietness. Another I'm TikTok, about my favorite, uh, uh, Ankylosaur. These guys, as you might have guessed, are related yeah. to Ankylosaurus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You upload Cephalus. I, I, I know about this dinosaur. I, I also really like this one. It's, um, it's basically Ankylosaurus, but it's just way smaller than that. Meaning, aside from their underbelly, these guys are covered in armor from head to toe. Yeah, that's uh, a very common trait in the ankylosaur family. Because almost every ankylosaur, or every ankylosaur, have these weird bony plates on the back. That's called osteoderms, I think it was. But yeah, that would have made it impossible for predators to, um, to catch a quick bite. Because if you want to eat this dinosaur, you have to turn it around on its belly. Um, because there are the vulnerable parts. So it's not that easy to fight this dinosaur. As you may have heard, yes, even their eyelids have armor. Yeah. Now, my guy Yui isn't the biggest ankylosaur. But he still reaches a whopping 20 feet or 6 meters. As well as weighing upwards of 2 tons. Yeah, Some folks true. theorize that because of how compact and heavy they are, they could swim like hippos. <laughs> but wait, 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 no wait. So wait, 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 wait. Is that true? Could they really swim like hippos? Well, as you all know, hippos don't really swim. They just uh, walk on the bottom of, of a river or the lake. So that's a very interesting fact. I, I didn't know that. Solid backing yet. So as of right now, swimming like this seems more likely. Yeah. And despite how long these guys are, they're actually relatively short. An average height human could probably look clear over them. Yeah, most ankylosaurs were actually very, like, short, but they were very long. But yeah, as he said, that's actually very useful because then you have a lower center of gravity and it's more difficult for predators to topple you over. Euoplocephalus would have had to contend with tyrannosaurs as their major predators. Yeah. And their low slung body put them at the perfect height to deal some damage to the ankles. And I mean, look at this thing. It's basically the dinosaur equivalent of a sledgehammer. Trust me, you don't want to get hit by that one. If it probably hit you right here in the ribs, it would shatter your ribs, um, crush your lungs. Uh, you would literally be dead in seconds if that dinosaur hit you with its tail with full force. You wouldn't, in the best possible scenario, survive that. Talk about an ankle breaker. Yeah. <laughs> when talk, talk about an ankle breaker. Well, it's not just an ankle breaker. For a human, it would probably be a body slammer. So well, these are some animals that have made scientists' lives Is that rather tapajara? difficult. They're called tapajara and tupondactylus. I think tapajara has one of the most um, famous displays of any pterosaur. Look at this head crest. This absolutely huge i mean i think it would be greater than your head actually two very closely related species yeah. it was once thought that tupondactylus was actually a species of tapajara but more recent morphological studies show that they're actually a separate species well let's say it's not very easy to make out the difference because because they are very closely related and look confusingly similar to each other but there was also a third, classified as another species of Tupondactylus. Oh really? More recent studies suggest that the third species was actually a female Tupondactylus. <laughs> if that's the case, it would show that this species is actually sexually dimorphic. For those who don't know what sexual dimorphism is, that means that the males and females both look different. With males being larger and having a significantly more decorated head. But this theory isn't 100%, so take it with a grain of salt. Oh, it's not 100%, so it, 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 could, it could change in the future. Either way, both Tapajara and Tupondactylus... Oh my god, this design looks, <laughs> looks so weird. It literally looks like a turkey. This head crest actually looks very much like a cassowary. Let's bear some of the most impressive head crests anywhere in the animal kingdom. It is impressive. And as with most fanciful crests, it was likely used with mating rituals. And females would most likely want males with a brighter and larger crest. Talk about a certified freak. Certified freak. Certified B. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I think that's it for this video. A big shout out to the Dino Facts for uh, uploading these dinosaur shorts. It's actually very fun to watch. But anyways, ladies and gentlemen, if you like this video, then smash the like button. And if you want more content like this, then click the subscribe button and turn notifications on at all costs costs when well, then i say thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next video